What's up guys? We're about to share our top 10 non-Funko collectibles. You ready, Mix? I'm ready. Let's do it! Alright guys, this is a tag video. It was started by another channel called Nerd of the 80s and our friends Tracy's Basement have tagged us, so we decided we are going to do it. This is our top 10 non-Funko collectibles. Now, we were unsure how we were gonna do it, so we're kinda doing it kinda like how Jason and Tracy are doing it over at Tracy's Basement, or how they did it, I should say, where they sort of combined Both their favorites, their, favorites yeah. their top 10, because we mix our collectibles. Yeah, and like yeah. You don't have your own, no. really. I mean, you do. But in then a we way, have stuff that we both yeah, like. We, we and share then, and everything. Really, yeah, you right? have things that you prefer. Yeah. So it was still hard to choose. So we are going a little bit down the sentimental route. Yeah. Not every <laughs> single thing, but um, yeah, we chose, we chose the things that were a little close to the heart, if yeah. you will, or have some memory attached to it, um, aside from just going to the store and picking yeah, it up. Yeah, yeah. That being said, if you stick around to the end, we do have, as the number one pick, two brand new items as the number one pick that we just bought. But we <laughs> had to show them because they're brand new and we want you to see them because we think they're really cool. So um, they might be statues, I don't know. <laughs> All right, Mix, you ready? Yeah. All right, number 10 is Mix's horrified B-movie victim set. Tell us about it, Mix. So these guys, when me and Jay first started dating, like, forever ago, this is the first little gift he ever got me, and I had actually gone away to my mom's house to visit her, and came back, and he had a present for me when I got home, and it was these guys, <laughs> and I don't really, Nothing but a romantic. I know. <laughs> no. Well, I really was into like horror and gothy stuff, but I don't think I collected a lot of like toys. You got me into collecting toys in general. So these guys I thought were so cool and so different, and I love anything, like I loved horror movies back then. Basically, basically they're extras. Yeah, they're like extras. So we provide the screaming hordes, you provide the monsters. So on the back there's like a teddy bear and the screaming hordes running away. <laughs> So I think these guys are awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. In the front, there's like a little cityscape in the background, and I think there's like planes crashing or just flying around. And yeah, so this is kind of like a sentimental, really cute thing that I got from Jay, my first gift from him. The first gift. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it wasn't a ring, it wasn't flowers. Have I ever got any flowers? I think, yeah, you have got me flowers a couple times. Of course I have. <laughs> and, and you got mad at me. I'm like, I want toys. What are these flowers? <laughs> no. <just> gonna die. <laughs> We've decided that coming in at number nine, there's two items: vampire wine and a four-pack of True Blood synthetic blood that Mix gave to me. Tell us a little about these two items, Mix. So the vampire wine Jay had before I met him, and he always would joke before we started really hanging out a lot that I should come over and have vampire wine with him. And so I thought that that was really cute and I always <laughs> wanted to take him up on it. I never told him that I don't like red wine. <laughs> I probably would have tried to drink it but I'm glad we never opened it. We probably just hung out and looked at it. Yeah, I don't know. I think what happened was that was before we were actually hanging out <laughs> dating. <laughs> but we were friends and mm. I was like, hey, let's crack open this vampire <laughs> wine that I've had forever. Not that I would even want to drink it anyway, but I thought that was like a cool thing to say and whatever, you know. Once we did hang out, if there was liquor involved, we just got whatever we wanted. Yeah, exactly. Not red vampire I think, wine. I think we both decided that this is cooler, kept closed. Yeah, but now it's always made me love the bottle because yeah. I always think of that. Yeah. Okay, and this was a gift from Mix one of the first shows that we watched together all the time, if not the first show. I think I can, it was maybe even the first show. Yeah, yeah, was True Blood. And we both like vampire stuff. And yeah. uh, so she was in Vegas yeah. by, without me. And, uh, I think it was with my mom and my sister. Yeah, and so at the time we were, we were, we were a fresh couple. <laughs> <laughs> and we were watching True Blood a lot together when we hung out, so she got this for me, and I thought that was awesome. This has been on one of my shelves or on my desk ever since. Yeah, and it's a little bit 
battered looking now, and the bottles are, I think it would not be safe to drink at this point, <laughs> yeah. but. A little tidbit for um, those of you who have been watching our videos since way back in the day. One of our first videos ever had these in the thumbnail, possibly even in the video, just oh, yeah. sitting sitting there like this, right? But we were pretending in the thumbnail yeah. that we were drinking them, I think, or something, weren't we? Yeah, I think we because had we were up. doing uh, True Blood Funko Pops. Mm -hmm. But that was like maybe our fifth video yeah. ever, if, if that. So yeah. if you go back and watch that, it's pretty funny. We were not that great on camera. It was. Not that we are now either, but it was <laughs> way worse than this. <laughs> yeah, we were a little bit nervous to be on camera, I think. Yeah, so that was number nine, Vampire Wine, True Blood, Synthetic Blood. Coming in at number eight is the Jack and the Sally resin dolls in their coffin still. Obviously, I'm not going to take them out of their coffins because that's like part of the entire package <laughs> like that's what's cool having the coffins on your shelf right yeah so but i will show you inside i think we showed these in a video at some point a quick uh, peek at them I or, think. or we just had them again as a display i for, think we peeked in did we peek in i think no, i don't remember so yeah i don't i don't take these guys out because i mean i think it looks cool on the inside but i also i can't bend these back far enough to give you a full shot really because show it, yeah it's so stiff and it would then crease up the box right yeah. and i hate when that happens for <laughs> other things so um jack actually has a different head which um he's happy in that oh just a straight face actually i thought he was happy but um as you can see he has a different head you can switch up there so that's pretty cool and uh show him sally mix has a little latch here that's a bone which is pretty cool to close it up so there's sally Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> Sally's trying to escape. She's like, I've been in here for like 25 years. That's what Sally does. She tries to escape. So this is by John Planning. I actually have a little bit of a story that goes with this. A long time ago, when I first moved out to Vancouver, I collected a lot of stuff. I don't have any of what I used to have before because uh, something in life happened and I had to get rid of everything, but that's a story for another time. <laughs> um, but I did collect a lot of things that I got from Japan because I had a friend in Japan. And what we would do at the time is I would collect, I would um, trade him stuff that I got in Canada and he would trade me even, even money for big boxes of stuff he got from Japan. So that's where these came from, even though these aren't Japanese versions. Um, my dad may or may not have those, but the story is, at the time, I was getting a lot of these, a lot of Nightmare Before Christmas stuff, and uh, I had given these two to my dad. I went to visit my dad not very long ago, and um, he graciously let me take these two back. <laughs> even though I gave them to him. So that is the um, 15 inch, 17 inch Jack and Sally in their coffins. Number seven, there's no real sentimental story to this one. No real story at all, except we think this is a really cool set of figures. It is Tim Burton's Tragic Toys for Girls and Boys, right? And there's a set of 12, they come in boxes like this, mm -hmm. um, three per pack, and there's yeah. four packs of three. Tell us about the mix. So these guys are characters from the Tim Burton's The Melancholy Death of Oyster Boy and Other Stories. So that's a book of poems. You don't have that book though, right? I don't have it, and I haven't have read it. I to get that for yeah. you. Yeah, I want to read it, because these little guys are so <laughs> cute. But, but you don't need to know that book or yeah, know anything no. about it to love these figures, if you like Tim Burton. Totally, yeah, because these guys are so Tim Burton-y. They're like, you just have to like Tim Burton and you're good. But yeah. I do still want that book, because I love these guys. Mm. So there's 12 in total, three in each pack. So there is Robot Boy, Stain Boy, The Girl With Many Eyes, Mummy Boy, Roy the Toxic Boy, Jimmy the Hideous Penguin Boy, the boy with nails in his eyes, Oyster Boy, Junk Girl, the Pincushion Queen, Bree Boy, and Staring Girl. Nice, so who's your favorite mix? So my, uh, I don't have one favorite. Oh. <laughs> I, like, I like Staring Girl and Junk Girl and the Pincushion Queen and the Mummy Boy. And I, I mostly like the girls the best, but I like think Mummy Boy is really cute. <laughs> <laughs> and Oyster Boy comes with a little mask. Oh right? yeah, so he has this tiny little mask here and it's got like, it looks like little holes, they're not actually holes I guess that tie onto his yeah. face. Then the Pincushion Queen has a little like 
kind of plywood stand yeah. that she has. And there's little nails in the board, so. These guys are so cool. And they are all named on the back as well here. Nice. So one thing I will say guys, if you like these figures and you think you might go out and buy like one pack of three, do yourself a favor, just get all four at once because as soon as you have three of them, <laughs> you want them all. You have to have them Yeah, all. exactly. So especially when you see them on the back. Right? And <laughs> which, like, yeah. which set would you even pick? Yeah. Like? yeah, it's pretty hard. Oh, the cool thing is, I don't know, there's another one as well, I can't remember who it is, I'm pretty sure anyway, but I do know there's a bigger version of the pin cushion queen, about six or seven inches yeah. I believe it is, so I'll have to look into that too and get those sometime. Yeah. I don't think I've shown you them. They would there be are good bigger little versions of a couple of the them. Set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, these look really cool on this display, I like them. Yeah. So that is Tim Burton's Tragic Toys for Girls and Boys. <laughs> Number six is my Alice Cooper signed LP. Now I got this when I was just a baby boy, I was a very young teenager, I think around 14 or 15. Uh, I was with my best friend at the time. We went to see Alice Cooper, and if it wasn't my very first rock concert, it was my first really big, major rock concert from an artist that I love, for sure. We met Alice Cooper and Kane Roberts, and they both signed this for me. I was like super excited. Then we saw the concert afterward and it was just amazing. So I thought I would add this into the shot as well because this is how I keep it displayed. The little McFarlane Alice Cooper set here. So uh, yeah, that's why I have it displayed now on the shelf. Um, this is a pretty cool item for me. Um, a good memory. Rock was really important to me all growing up. Um, I wanted to be a rock star, in case you didn't know that already. Um, I did not become one, in case you didn't know that already. But I tried, and um, had a good time doing it. There is definitely not enough rock and roll memorabilia in here. Is there mix? No, Say no. There's not enough, and we'll get more. <laughs> All right, so that's number six. My signed Alice Cooper album, signed by Alice Cooper and Kane Roberts, from when I was just a little bitty boy. Number five is a set of kiss figures. I know they look like dolls, but they're kiss figures. <laughs> nah, you can call them dolls, that's fine. Actually, they are supposed to be sort of like a throwback, a copy, if you will, even, of the old Mego figures back in the 70s when they had dolls that looked just like the KISS members. That is my favorite, of course, and many others, Gene Simmons, but I like them all. I was a humongous KISS fan as a kid. Like, I can't even tell you. One of the first things I listened to, on my own anyway, was KISS. My older brother had KISS albums in the room down the hall, and he would go to school or whatever. He was way older than me. I was just like, I don't know how old I was. Also, you'll figure out how old I am if I say how old I was and then which album I listened to, things like that. You'll do the math and figure that out. We don't want that, do we, Mix? No. But anyway, in my room, I had my own Winnie the Pooh <laughs> record player. Now, it came with like weird records that weren't actually records. Like the plastic ones? Like yeah, the thick yeah, that played, ones? but it could play real records as well. And I would go over to my <laughs> brother's room and take from him Kiss Records, without him knowing. Often, Destroyer, if you guys know that album. And I would play it in my room on my Winnie the Pooh player. <laughs> so if you're just finding this out now for the first time, Chris, I apologize, but that's what I was doing and that's why your records are scratched. <laughs> but anyways, these figures are very cool. I haven't unsnipped them yet to display them. I like them in the blister pack. These packs are really cool, actually. The company is called Figures Toy Company. If I snip this off, which I will do eventually, maybe we'll do a video, I don't know. You can like kind of just open it up, take the figure out, display them if you want, but you're not wrecking the package. You yeah. Know I mean, you still have like a blister pack, or whatever. I, th I think it's pretty cool. I think more toys should come like that. Definitely. Where it can, you know, look like it, it's yeah. packed in there for good, but you can open it up if you want to without destroying the package yeah. because I like the option. They will be displayed at some point, just standing up on their own, but they just haven't made it to that point yet. So this has been number five, my kiss dolls that are kind of like a throwback to the old Mego figures. I did have two of those at one point, but I have no more of them. Maybe I will find them at a flea market someday. Number four is just one of Mix's dragons. You tell us about it, Mix. So this is a water dragon. 
from series three, and I could have hauled all the McFarland dragons over here. Um, I don't have too many, but I How picked many do my you favorite. Have? Six, six or seven? Yeah, I only have, it's just six, I think. I can't keep track of them. <laughs> That's not very many. I know one person in particular who has a lot of them, and I'm so jealous of them. <laughs> but one of one of the two that tagged us <laughs> at Tracy's basement. I love those dragons. So this is the my favorite of the ones that I have um, because he's. I normally I don't like dragons that I didn't like the water dragons at first because they kind of don't have regular dragon wings. But now that I got this guy, I like him the best because his little kind of dragon fins are translucent and like they're so just like they're so cool to look at. I love them. They kind of look like a steampunk sail on a ship, I think. And then he's got like crazy horns in the front of his face and just a massive like jaw happening with him. So while this particularly isn't like Super sentimental. I like all my McFarland dragons because Jay gets them for me and Aww. sometimes surprises me. With them. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Sometimes I pick them up and make him get them for me. But so I like them all. But this one is probably my favorite because he looks the coolest. And you like dragons in general. You have, yeah, you have, I love uh, dragons. Some pop dragons. Yeah, I have some Funko know. dragons. But this is not about Funko, right? No, no Funko. No. In this video, oops. <laughs> so this is one of the non-Funko dragons I have. Yeah, and I like all the dragons because they are McFarlane figures. Because I love almost all of McFarlane figures. But I do like dragons as well, <laughs> right? But uh, it's a cool little collection. Yeah, I. I just feel happy when I look at my dragon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was number four, one of Mix's dragons. Number three, we're back on the sentimental train, all right? A little bit, right, Mix? <laughs> yeah. So this is my itty bitty Tweety Bird collection, okay? And this is how it happened. When I was a very little boy, this little sweater meant everything to me, and I still recall it so vividly. I was so small, okay, and I always wanted to have this on. Like, I slept with it, I cuddled it. It was like my security blanket, but for me it was a vest, <laughs> right? And I just loved Tweety Bird for some reason. I have no idea why, but Tweety Bird was everything for a long time with me. And this vest was everything. Now, the sentimental part is not just that. My mom saves everything, literally, like, has everything from when I was a kid. Now, when I brought this up to her one time visiting, she didn't have my Tweety Bird vest. It was nowhere to be found in the house. And I gave her a little bit of poop, mostly jokingly, <laughs> but I have to be honest, it, it was kind of like, really, the one thing? <laughs> that was my Tweety Bird vest, right? So then, last Christmas or the Christmas before? I think it was the Christmas before. So two Christmases ago, my mom sends me a gift. They live in Nova Scotia, where Tracy's basement lives. Um, <laughs> And uh, I opened it up, and it was this Tweety Bird stuffed animal <laughs> and my vest. She found it. So I was like super excited. Plus, at Christmas, right? Yeah. So when I told Cyan that story, Cyan thought that was like just the greatest story, right? And she was like, aww, and just loved it, right? So what she did as a gift to me, my prized possession, <laughs> a one of a kind original signed Tweety Bird print. It's not even a print actually, it's the original. I'm not sure if I can uh, get you guys to see it without any light, so I'll throw up a picture, I guess if I'll have to. So that is my little Tweety Bird collection. Of course, I don't know, it's a, it's a toss up, but this is definitely one of my favorite things. It was really sweet of her to surprise me with that after she found out about that. And I'm going to start collecting Tweety Bird things now based on Cyan's suggestion. So we'll probably end up collecting Tweety Bird stuff together. But this is all I got right now, and that has been number Tweet. Number two is the Kotopakia Carnage statue. Absolutely no sentimental value, no story, except for the fact he is awesome and he deserves to be in our house. <laughs> right, yeah, Mix? Yeah. <laughs> so we'll get right to it, guys. Don't want to spend too much time on this, although we could. Um, so these all came separate on the figure, but um, nothing nothing articulates or anything. It's just a stationary statue. And there is a second arm. So there's a claw 
on this arm, which I prefer, and we keep it like that in the house, but it comes out, and the cool thing is, it's magnetized. So that's good for people like me, because I, can, I try to be fast putting things together or interchanging things, and I've broken stuff before on figures. So not on any statue, but on figures I have. So this is cool because, although it doesn't perf go perfectly flush in there, it, uh, it is good for that reason. Um, you just stick it in there, and when the magnet senses the other magnet, it just plop, puts it in there nicely for you. You don't chip any paint or anything like that. So I like that about this statue. So here is the other arm. It is, instead of like a claw, it has like a, a big symbiotic blade. Right, <laughs> All right, so there we go. <laughs> so yeah. And then you got him like that. Oh, maybe I'll keep that mix. That was pretty cool. That does look pretty cool. You know, I really like the claw because I love really sharp, like, yeah. witch hands or any claws that are really super long. In this position, I don't know, it cool seems like, like he should be doing this with it. Yeah. If it's, the, if it's the blade. But I like how he's just crouched with the claws. Yeah, he is in such a crazy awesome stance. Like, he's crouched, like, right low. He totally looks like he's gonna spring up and just do all of the damage. Yeah. And the symbiote is just like oozing out of his body from everywhere. And you can see so much like nice mu muscle sculpt in there. Yeah. Like right really especially good. up by really the good. shoulder blades and the neck is really good. Like he has a very muscular back, this guy. And everything, like even around his wrist there, like the flesh is all like twisted around or suit or around underneath the symbiote there it just it looks awesome and then the tentacles are coming off it like perfect angles for this guy to yeah. have a crazy silhouette yeah. then he's standing on a bunch of rubble with a broken sign underneath him that says daily bugle and you couldn't <laughs> even really read that but you can see the b for yeah, bugle you know and what you, it is you know they, the rest yeah. yeah they put enough there so you know <laughs> yeah. what sign it is yeah this is super cool so yeah coming in at number two Hotopakia. <laughs> Carnage statue. Number one for this video's top 10 non Funko collectibles is the brand new Suicide Squad statues Joker and Harley Quinn from DC Collectibles. I love these guys. These, I think, are actually probably more mine than yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. Especially the Joker. We both kind of like picked our favorite out of these guys. Yeah. And That's I, what's funny. Who do you think picked who? <laughs> I picked the Joker. Yeah, I wanted Harley and she wanted the Joker. It's pretty funny. We both want Killer Croc though. Yes, Killer he Croc looks, looks cool. awesome in these. In yeah. the set? Oh. He looks so good. But these guys, I don't want to go crazy like describing them or anything because I could be here for actually like yeah. another whole video. <laughs> but with the Joker, I love on him, like he's got that dark eyeliner. His face is really detailed and like he looks so crazy and then he's got that beautiful green hair. And then his body, you can see like all of his different muscles and stuff and the lines and his tiny little belly button. And then he's covered in his tattoos and he's got his Arkham sweatpants on. So they're standing on dog tags that say Suicide Squad on them. And then The tattoos on, look awesome on this. They look yeah. so good. And yeah. he's got like that, that sickly kind of white skin on him. It looks, everything <laughs> looks so good. This one, she has a little bracelet here. I just noticed it actually like moves around and I think it could come right off. Yeah. And then her stockings are actually fabric and I could see those tearing very easily. Yeah, they're actual, they're just a really small pair of fishnets. Yeah, they're like tiny fishnets. And then she's got that awesome jacket, Property of the Joker, and she looks amazing. Her shirt's all like torn up and they have, again, like a beautiful face on her and she's got like her little tattoos. You can see her tattoos under her fishnets and then she's got her amazing like high heeled high tops that she's got going on. I worry about this when I put her on the stand. I worry about her little heels there because they are as thin as they could possibly be yeah. and still be there. They're like two <laughs> stilettos. So, yeah. yeah. So I worry about that a little bit. I wouldn't be taking it off and back on no. too many times. You do not. They only uh, stand on one peg on each foot, and then yeah. the other foot's loose. You do not want that yeah. other foot to get caught in you the S. You don't even want to do that too much. Yeah, because it's actually stuck right in the S there. That yeah. could easily just snap off. Yeah, so we have to be a bit careful with these, as we do with other statues. Yeah, well. yeah, exactly. So I feel like maybe we were even cheating a little bit because we just got these. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we really wanted to show them, and we'll probably put them on this shelf here and it'll be in our background, so we thought we'd add it to yeah. this video 
before you saw them. You know, it all yeah. just worked out. So I hope you guys don't think we cheated with these two. <laughs> but this was our number one for this video. And it is the Joker and the Harley Quinn from the DC Collectibles Suicide Squad statue line. All right, thanks to Tracy's Basement for tagging us and getting us to do this video. And also thanks to Nerd of the 80s for starting the tag in the first place. That was a good idea. We are glad to be a part of it. And make sure you go check out their channels. The links will be in the description below. We had a blast sharing some of our favorite things with you that were not Funko, didn't we, Mick? We had a good time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed some of the things that we shared and let us know what your favorite was from everything that we shared in this video. Do that in the comments below. And if you want to do a video like this, we took a quick look around to see who was tagged and almost everybody has been <laughs> tagged. So here's the thing. We tag everyone. <laughs> You're watching this, you are tagged. Even if you don't have a YouTube channel, you've been tagged by Unboxing Rocks. So do the video, okay? We wanna see your top 10 non-Funko collectibles too. And if you do make a video or if you do have a post of some sort that is something like that, while you're in the comments, link it to us or link it to us on our Facebook page or our Twitter or Instagram, whatever. Just, I don't know, share it with us, all right? And while you're down there in the comments hanging out with us and chatting it up, if you see an icon that looks a little something like this, click it and give us a thumbs up, right Mix? Right. And what else? And subscribe. Subscribe to our channel because we might share more videos like this that have nothing to do at all with Funko. If you want to see more of that, you tell us that in the comments as well, okay? But be sure to subscribe. Go do that now if you haven't already. And as always, we appreciate you watching. Thank you very much, guys. You, yes you, rock.